it's me back with another video and uh, this time it is a get ready with me video i've been promising to do it for a while now but um i've had a poorly household everyone's been sick we've all had really crappy colds apart from me i've been all right i had mine the other week and then gave it everybody else so mark's been poorly and then sophie was poorly and then jake was poorly as well yesterday so um, and it's all seems to have gone on um, like the kid's chest as well, which makes it even worse, you know, when they're up in the night coughing and everything and then nobody in the house sleeps. So, yeah, so I haven't got around to doing it, uh, but I have today. I have some free time. So I'm going to be doing a get ready with me for absolutely no reason, because I am not going anywhere apart from parents evening, which is going to be fun <laughs> in a face full of makeup. But I'm sure that uh, that nobody is surprised by that anymore. So yeah, I look absolutely horrific today. I look like I haven't slept for about three years. Uh, but I'm going to get some stuff on my face. So uh, I'm going to start with my uh, primer. And I'm using the Ola Henriksen Seabrush Brightening Cream Gel. That's got loads of vitamin C in it. To try and fix my disgusting skin. Which in all honesty isn't that bad. Um, I'm usually covered in hormonal acne we all know what that's like uh, at that time of the month but I'm not doing too bad at the moment with it it's normally really bad on my chin like on my jawline I take a contraceptive pill for it actually it's called Yasmin um, and it helps with my hormonal acne I'm just going to put some of the Ola Henriksen banana bright eye cream Got that little bit of a yellow pigment in it to help with my dark circles. So yeah, contraceptive pill, I uh, take Yasmin and it's one of the best ones to help with hormonal acne and skin issues. I've tried loads of different ones in, in the past, but most of them have made my skin worse. So if you are like me and you struggle with hormonal acne um, and you're on the contraceptive pill, then ask your doctor about Yasmin. I'm just going to pop a bit of moisturiser on. This is my Embryolisse um, moisturiser. It's La Creme Concentrate. Lovely little French names that everyone has to try and pronounce. I have to Google them sometimes to know how to pronounce them. Does anybody else do that? It's quite embarrassing. <laughs> now, if you've got the time, I highly recommend when you've put your moisturiser on, and your, your primer it's a good idea to let it sit for five to ten minutes just so your skin can properly absorb it because if you ban your foundation and other products straight on top of it um it's sort of going to blend with those rather than you know sink into your skin so letting it sit really absorb into the skin and condition it before you start putting any makeup on if you have the time which i do not today uh, normally I do brows and eyes before base, um, especially if I'm doing like a, a really smoky eye look or something that's going to have a lot of different powders on that are going to, you know, eyeshadows that are going to drop out, fall out onto your face. I'll do it that way around, but I'm just going to do something simple today. So I'm going to do my foundation first because it's normally quicker. I'm um, just going to pop a bit of primer on now and I'm going to use the Revolution Pro Radiant Peach Primer. It's a brightening primer. I've spoke to you about this before. Um, I like this because it's got sort of like an orange pigment to it, as you can see. It looks quite scary when it comes out of the pot, but when you've got it on your skin, it doesn't actually look too bad. It doesn't look crazy orange like it does when you squeeze it onto your fingers. Um, last setting step, I've been using this recently and you've got to like shake it loads uh, because all the, all the colour gets stuck at the bottom of the bottle. But it's the Glow Revolution Prime Set Glow and it's uh, by Makeup Revolution. It's an illuminating face and body spray. I already look a little bit more alive now. Right, foundation. So today I'm going to use the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops these guys and um i mentioned these before to you uh, on my base tutorial video because um i picked these up from 
the beauty outlet at um, East Midlands Outlets at Thormanton because they were on offer for about seven quid whereas when you buy them online they're about 35 quid so there's a massive difference in price there um, and I've wanted to try them for a while and they are honestly fantastic so when I apply foundation out of one of these fancy little dropper bottles I squeeze a few drops onto the back of my hand I'm just going to add in a drop of the darker shade and a drop of my Revolution Liquid Highlighter. This is the Euphoric Gold shade. Um, I said I couldn't find it, but I did. And it just gives a, a really illuminating uh, finish to the foundation. So just a drop or so of that. And then mix it together. I literally just splattered that everywhere. So I blend that on the back of my hand and then I get it on my face using a foundation brush and this is the Zoeva 105 Lux Highlight Brush but for some reason it works really well for foundation because I'm not I'm not sort of blending it in with the brush I'm just applying it with the brush I mentioned it to you before about applying with a brush because you can really work it into your pores. I do like to bring it down the neck a little bit as well. So I'm just going to pat all that in, make sure I've got it all in those pores, all in the little crevices. And then once I've done that, I can go in with my beauty blender, damp beauty blender. This is my Jeffree Star one. I do like these beauty blenders nice and soft and you've got that kind of like angled part on as well so you can get up under your eyes. I'm just going to give it a spritz with the um, Prime Set and Glow and I'm just going to tap that all over just to blend it out and give it a nice flawless finish, get rid of any of those brush marks. So I tend to find that foundation gives a really flawless finish and I don't actually need to go back in with any extra. Um, sometimes you want to top it up, but if you do have any areas where you need to top it up a little bit, like, you know, you've got some acne scarring or um, areas of existing acne and you just want a bit more coverage, then you can go over it again. But I honestly don't feel I need it with that, um, with the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops because they have got such a great coverage anyway. So now all that's on, I'm going to go in with my concealer and this is the Barry M All Night Long Concealer. They're about a fiver, um, I get mine from Superdrug. You've heard me talk about this before, I really do like this concealer, it's got a nice creamy consistency to it and I find it's thick enough for it to cover dark circles but not too thick um, because obviously dark circles are what I have my, that's my main issue. I'm going to use this just to highlight under my eyes and down the centre of my face. And the brush I'm going to use is the MAC 252S. This is what I use for concealer and for cut creases and things like that because it's got a really nice flat um, edge to it that's nice and thin so you can get in, get really get in, especially when you're doing a cut crease, you can really get into the crease and make it nice and neat. Uh, but I use it for concealer as well because it's quite flat. And I'm just going to put that in that little upside down triangle under the eye there. And then down the centre of my face as well. So I do kind of like a little upside down triangle on my forehead. If you've got a really big forehead, I'd probably advise not to highlight it any further because it just makes it stand out a bit more. And then I take it down the centre of my nose. And keep his bow. And then chin. And I'm going to blend all those areas out with my beauty blender. Again, it's damp. I'll just give it another switch of this. Um, glow 
I don't know what I'm going to call this. I don't want to call it glow revolution because that sounds a bit weird. Glow spray. You know when you've got a little itch and you put your foundation on, you don't want to rub it off. I should use a little brush. So once that's all blended out, I'm going to set under my eyes uh, with my RCMA No Colour Powder. I've told you about this loads of times before because I do really like this powder. Um, it's got a really fine texture to it. So it doesn't, it doesn't go extra cakey. And I'm going to use Teeny Tiny Little Beauty Blender. Make sure there's no creases. If you've just blended it out, then there shouldn't be. I'm going to dip the sponge in there and then pat it under my eyes. I'm going to put quite a nice thick layer under there. Get covered in it. And then if you've got any other areas that go excessively oily, like T-zone, so your forehead or your nose, or your chin or whatever, then you can just go ahead and bake them. And I tend to put a little bit on my chin as well, because that's normally, that's my oiliest area. And it tends to come off there first, for some reason, on my chin. And you've got like a, a thin layer of skin on your nose. There's not a lot of flesh there. So I always, I always bake that as well, because I tend to pull off the foundation on that area quickly. And then to set the rest of the face, I just take some of that powder into the lid. I'm going to use uh, my fluffy powder brush, and this is the Peaches and Cream PCO4. It's a nice fluffy powder brush. I take a bit of that out of the lid and just tap it off so there's no excess on there. And I just tap that onto the rest of my face. And don't forget your neck if you've put foundation down there as well. So the areas where I bake my chin and my nose, I'm going to brush that off lightly. But I'm going to leave my eye bake on because I'm going to do eyes and that'll just catch any fallout that I might have. Right, so brows next. I'm going to use my Anastasia Beverly Hills 7B brush. That's my nice little thin uh, angled brush there. And my Revolution pomade, the Revolution Pro one. I always use this. This is in the shade Ebony. I'm going to get some of that out of the pot. And put that on the lid. Just so I can get any excess product off the brush and, you know, flatten it out. I'm just going to brush through my brows and make sure there's no foundation stuck in there or powder. I'm just going to add a few hair strokes into the front of my brow. And continue adding those hair strokes through the rest of my brow in an upwards motion. If brows are something that you struggle with, um, I have done a brow tutorial for natural brows and Instagram brows. So take a look at that and that I'll explain in detail what I'm doing um, now. And then brush the brow down to add some hair strokes into the top of the brow. I'm gonna put them in the same direction as the hair growth. And then when you're happy with the hair strokes, you can brush them out. So now I've got the um, brows filled in, I'm going to carve them out with my P. Louise base. I love this P. Louise base. I mentioned it in my post yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before? I mentioned it in my post the other day, um, how good it is. And I do absolutely love this stuff. And this one is, this is shade two. So 
So now I've done both brows and I've carved out both brows on the bottom and on the top. Um, I can go ahead and prime my eyes. I'm going to use the same P. Louise base in shade two to do that. I'm going to put it all over the lid. Obviously, because I've used that to carve the brow out as well, it'll blend quite nicely. So I'm just going to, I'm going to put it all over the lid. I'm going to be careful that I don't get it anywhere near where I've put powder um, on the under eye. Um, because you should never put cream over powder. It's a surefire way to get a cake face. So the trick to any good eye base when using the P. Louise base or a concealer or whatever it is that you're going to use um, once you've put it on is to rather than go over with a sponge or, um, you know, powder or whatever to set it, don't set it, set it using the brush method, just tap at it, tap at it until it's kind of like tacky, not wet, you don't want it shiny wet, you just want it sort of like sticky, tacky and that'll get the, that'll soak up those um, eyeshadows and stick and the colours will be really pigmented. You just want to keep patting at it. And you'll notice the change when it sort of starts to dry down. It won't look as wet, so it won't have that sheen to it, it won't look shiny. Um, we're primed and ready to go. Uh, I can get on with the eyes and I'm going to use the Carnival XL Pro Palette, as you might have guessed, because I use this for almost every single eye look that I do. It's amazing. The colours are phenomenal. It's got such a fantastic shade range and everything's so bright, um, which is me all over. You can see which ones I use the most because I've hit pan on quite a few, uh, like these, <laughs> unfortunately. Doesn't that really bug you when you got a favourite palette that you really like and then you hit pan on a couple of shades everything else is perfect but it's just like one or two shades that you've hit pan on and you're right at the bottom and you think I've got to buy that palette again just for that shade and they're like 46 quid these palettes are so 46 quid for one eyeshadow I'm not going to be happy if you're listening Stacey Marie anywhere you need to make singles of the shade basic because that's my favourite transition shade I need a single pot of that Anyway, I'm going to do something quite simple today. I thought just a smoky back. It seems I'm going to parents' evening as well. I don't want to look like a drama queen, which we all know I am. Uh, but it's parents' evening. So I'm going to stick to something simple, just sort of like a warm smoky brown all over the lid kind of thing. A couple of my favourite blending brushes then. Um, this is the Zoeva 2, 2, oh God, 3 or O, oh, I'm not entirely sure. The Lux Crease brush and this is the Rose Golden Collection. I'm going to use this. This is one of my favourite fluffy blenders. I've got a small fluffy blender. Uh, it's a blender. I've got a small fluffy blender, and this is a Mac Two Two One. Um, it's like that one, just smaller. And then another good blending brush that I've got is the uh, Peaches and Cream PC Ten brush. Um, it's sort of like a. It's still a fluffy blender, but it's not as fluffy as the Zareva one. So you can get a bit more concentration. Um, two areas with that one. I'm going to use those three and I'm just going to start with the shade basic, my favourite, which is this one here and I'm just going to put that all over the crease. If you put a primer on, um, just be aware that whilst you're dithering about doing other things like I am right now, that you could end up with creases back in uh, that base. So I always go back in with my brush straight before I put any eyeshadow on just to make sure I've got no creases. It's not creased up anywhere and it's nice and flat and clean. So I think what we'll do for the purpose of this video is I'll do one eye and then off camera and do the other one just to show you. So that shade basic then. I'm going in with the Zoeva crease brush. Take plenty of that on my brush. like so and then I'm going to pack it on in sort of like a circular shape so I'm going all around the crease as you can see I'm not blending it out you know in those sort of windscreen wiper motions I'm just packing it on I'm packing that colour on I'm not bringing it out too far I'm just sort of creating like a nice circle over the crease I'm going to really build the colour up because that's what I'm going to use to blend out.
And so once you're happy with the amount of shadow on there, I'm going to take my smaller blending brush, the MAC 221. I'm going to go into the shade Shuffle, which is sort of like an orangey, yellowy brown, orangey, yellowy brown. And we use that shade to blend out the edges of the shade that we've just put on very lightly. And I'm not going to bring it out too far. I'm just going to go right on the edge of that colour and in small little circular motions, I'm just going to begin to blend it out. So, I don't know if you guys have watched it, but I've been watching The Stranger on Netflix. And it's so good. I got so into it. And I hate it when I get really into a, a series like that and then it finishes. And I've got nothing to watch. But I've really enjoyed watching it. I highly recommend if you haven't, go and watch it. It's one of those shows that have got like cliffhangers at the un end of every episode. So you just really want to watch the next one. You watch one and then you're like, no, I need to go into the next one to know what happened. And we were watching it, it, watching it at night, obviously. And we're getting to the end of one and I was like, right, next one. And Mark was like, no, bed. Damn it. And when you get into a show like that, you end up blitzing it, don't you? So you watch it. It took me about a week to get through it, I think. Watching one or two a night. Completely obliterated it. And I've got nothing else to watch. So I've been watching the Crime and Investigation channel on Amazon. <laughs> I love my true crime series. There's a problem with women. Most women like it, don't they? True crime. That says a lot. So once that's all blended out, you want to make sure you're looking to make sure that you've got no harsh edges. And I've not used too much of that shade. I've just used enough to blend out the first shade. And I'm going to use my other fluffy brush, the Peaches and Cream one just to go over the outer blend of the second shade, just to make sure that it's blended nicely, transitioned nicely into the skin. And then I'm gonna go back in with the first shade, basic, on the first brush, back into the crease again, just to make sure that colour is still nice and deep, because once you go over it with a second shade, you can sometimes blur it out a little bit. So I just like to make sure that the shade is nice and visible. And then without adding anything else onto the second brush, the small fluffy blender, just going to gently go over those edges again. So now I've got the crease shade on. I'm looking at putting the lid shade on. And for that, I am going to use a flat brush. And I like this one. It's just um, one of the small flat blending brushes that I've got from the Candy Cosmetics 10-piece marble set. They've got some really nice, cheap things on their website. So go and take a look at that. And I'm going to use the shade, the second shade down from Basic, which is Hall. So it's more like sort of like a reddy brown colour, slightly darker. I'm going to take that on the flat brush and I'm going to put that all over the lid. And can you see, because I've got that, um, I can't really, the camera's not picking it up because I've still got that bake on there and I've got some of this brown powder falling out. It's just catching it. And then with my small fluffy blender, I'm going to take a little bit of that shade hole just to blend that into the crease shade. Just to make sure everything transitions nicely. I'm really happy with that. I'm just going to smoke out the lash line. So I'm going to take a, a small stubby brush, flat, straight on the end there. This is the Morphe E10. I think it's an E10 or it's E10. I can't quite see it. I'm going to take the shade Intuition. No, I'm not. I'm going to take the shade Lights Out, which is the black one. 
onto that flat stiff brush right onto the edge of it I'm going to put that right up close to my lash line so what that's going to do is it's going to, going to kind of serve as an eyeliner and fill in any of those little gaps on your eyelashes so that when you do put your lashes on they don't stick out like a sore thumb And once I've got a sufficient amount of that on, I'm going to use my small fluffy blender again with that black shade, just a teeny tiny little bit. And I'm just going to smoke out what I've just put on there, kind of blend it into that warm brown shade on the lid. Just so, like I say, there's no harsh lines and everything just melts into each other. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to the brow bone. I'm going to use, you have to excuse the state of it, I dropped it. <laughs> As you can see, it's all crumbled up. This is the Revere Cosmetics Glass Skin Highlighter in shade 2, so it's like a golden shade. Now, I say Revere Cosmetics, I haven't got a clue how you pronounce it. It is R-I-V-E-H-R. So if you can tell me how to pronounce that, then please do, because I haven't a clue. But you can find them on Instagram. So R-I-V-E-H-R Cosmetics, I think it is. Uh, but these highlighters are phenomenal and they're about 12 quid, so you can't go wrong. So I'm going to take another uh, flat brush. This is another one from the Candy Cosmetics 10-piece marble brush set. And just a bit of that highlighter just to highlight the brow bone. I love these highlighters. They're not glittery at all. They're just really glassy. They've got a nice sheen to it and they're really pigmented. Whereas, you know, some highlighters are just dead glittery, aren't they? And you put them on and just look like you've rolled yourself in glitter, which is great because that's what you want to do. Not judging. And I'm going to use another fluffy blender, the Peaches one again, just to blend out that highlight. And um, that is that. So I'm just going to quickly go and do the other eye and then come back and we can fit some lashes. Okay, so both eyes are now done. I'm going to put on a little bit of mascara and this is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara in Waterproof. Uh, it's my favourite mascara and mostly it's because of the brush. Um, mascaras are basically the same, like they, the actual uh, product itself. It's the brush that differs. Um, and I like this brush because it's kind of like a, a plasticky brush and it really gets every individual lash. Whereas some of the, the bigger, fluffier brushes, um, I find, don't. And the trick to mascara is making sure you go right to the root So I kind of roll it to get the root and then I give it a wiggle. You want to be getting the most product at the root of the lash rather than on the end. So I've got the mascara on. And now I'm going to use a um, small, like sort of fluffy powder brush. Um, this is actually the Peaches and Cream PC17 highlight brush, but I use it to get rid of the powder under my eyes. I'm going to rub off all that powder. And then a little tip, just go back in with your beauty blender, uh, not the foundation side, the clean side, and just pat all that powder that's left over, pat it in, um, and the damp sponge will also pick up any excess product. It will pick up any of that excess powder and get rid of it. So your under eyes don't look cakey. Right, now to go under the eyes. And I don't want to go too dark under my eyes, obviously, because like I say, parents' evening and all that. Don't want to look weird and freaky. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just going to go in with the 
uh, flat stubby brush again um, and I'm just going to take the shade Hall which is the warm sort of medium brown shade that we used to go all over the lid and I'm put that I'm going to put that close to the lash line underneath so I'm not going to bring it down too far I'm just going to get nice and close to the lash line with it and do that on both sides I'm going to take the shade basic which we used in the crease and I'm going to go under that line of the um, haul, the medium brown shade that we've just applied. I'm just going to put a little bit under there, under that line of colour. And then lastly, take the shade Shuffle, which was that um, yellowy shade, that yellowy, browny, orangey shade that we used to blend out. And I'm going to put that just underneath the basic shade that we've just used, the second shade, the one that we used in the crease. Now I'm just going to take that Peaches and Cream brush, the Concentrating Blender. I'm going to blend all those three colours together. Right, eyeliner. I tend to find when I've got dark eyes like this that a white or nude eyeliner in the lower waterline looks really nice and it makes your eyes stand out. Right, so I'm going to put a nude uh, eyeliner on the lower waterline and it's such a teeny tiny pencil. It is... <laughs> it's a Rimmel one. I can just see that. A nude liner. I really do need to get a new one of those. And that's going on the lower waterline. And then something that a lot of people don't actually do, but I do like to do, is I take my short stubby shader brush take a light shade so in this instance I'm going to take the shade pillow talk which is this sort of like whitey creamy shade on that brush and I'm going to set the eyeliner that I've just applied by just popping a bit of powder over the top of it and whilst it doesn't feel necessarily comfortable while you've got sort of gritty powder in your eye once you get rid of the excess in there your eye naturally waters it out um, it helps to set the eyeliner and make it last all day as opposed to 10 minutes. <laughs> Which, let's face it, is normally the case with most pencil eyeliners. And then just a little bit of mascara on the bottom lashes. I always wipe the brush off on the side of the bottle because the more product that you've got on the mascara wand, the more likely your lashes are to be clumpy and have spider legs. And then once I've got the mascara on there, I like to go through with a spoolie just to make sure it's not clumped up. So the other end of the eyebrow brush, the spoolie, So once that's done, I'm going to pop a bit of that highlighter that we used, um, the golden toned one, back on my little flat brush and that's going to go in the corner of my eye, the inner corner. I always find that that uh, inner corner highlight makes a massive difference, it makes your eyes really stand out. Right, lashes. I'm going to use these nice little wispy ones that I have here. Nice little wispy lashes. And my black duo glue. And leave, leave those to go tacky for a few seconds. Don't try and put lashes on 
with glue that isn't tacky and is still wet because I'll slip and slide all over the place and you'll just end up with glue everywhere and getting really frustrated by the eyelashes. And while that's going off, I'm just going to do a bit of powder contour. So I'm going to use my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Give Me Sun and Dark Deepest. I'm going to go in with the Give Me Sun first, which is a slightly lighter shade. And my little blush brush here that I like from the Candy Cosmetics 10 Piece Marble Set. And I'm going to take that on my cheeks. I like to do it in this sort of like triangular shape. So I go across the cheekbone and then up into the temple. Jawline. You'll notice I'm kind of just throwing this one on. Um, this is just kind of like I'm treating it like a bronzer and then I'm going to deepen the contour with the second shade and I take that across the forehead as well remember the three finger rule if your forehead isn't as big as three fingers don't contour across the top of your forehead bring it in at the sides but don't go across the top because that's going to reduce the size of your forehead even more and then you'll look like you've got a tiny forehead which is totally fine if that's what you want if not I would strongly advise against it Okay, and before I put the second shade of contour in, I'm going to go ahead and stick these lashes on. So I found the easiest way to put lashes on is I'll take the lash with my tweezers. For me, tweezers work. If they don't work for you, then that's fine. You don't have to do them with tweezers. Um, but what I do is I get the lash in between my tweezers and I get a little mirror and I like to look down. And then I place the lash on top. Once it's stuck in the middle, I pull up either side and stick that. Stick it down. Of course, it isn't as easy as that and you do have to have a lot of practice. So don't worry if you don't get it straight away. And then once it's stuck on, I just like to press down on it gently from the top of the lash just to make sure it's all stuck to the lid right on the lash line you want it and put the second one again get it with your tweezers sort of in the middle look down into the mirror and sit it on top and then once you've got it on in the middle pull up either side Once it's stuck, push down gently on the top of the lash. So kind of like this. And then once the glue's gone off a bit more, you can kind of faff around with it, you know, squeeze it together. Make sure that it's um, blended with your own lash. But you certainly don't want to do that while you've got wet glue on there because it'll just pull the lash right off. There we go. So now the lashes are on. I'm going to finish up that powder contour with the second shade, Dark Deepest. This is, this one is um, it's slightly darker than the other one I used. And I'm going to take that on my blush brush again. And I'm going to sort of concentrate it right on that contour line. And if you can't remember where that is, do the fist face. So I'm going to put it right on that contour line. I'm going to focus it there and blend it out. We're not going to go low sort of down into this area and we're not going to bring it too high. Just really trying to focus it on that, that contour line. And then just a little bit on the jaw, just to intensify the contour a little bit. Especially if you've got that like double chin area, which we all have. Contour it away. And then just a little bit on the forehead. I'm going to keep it right by the hairline then. I'm not going to bring it too far in because that was the purpose of the other shade, the lighter shade. Right, next up of the contour 
I'm going to use this um, MUA Cosmetics bronzed matte bronzing powder so there's no shimmer in it. This is in the shade Solar and it's a slightly, it's kind of a grey, more grey toned uh, bronzer slash contour rather than the MAC ones which were a little bit more orangey. Um, and I just like to take that on a little fluffy brush and this is one from the Candy Cosmetics 10 piece marble set and I like to take a little bit of that, not too much, tap off the excess and I take that under my lip because that helps to plump up the bottom lip and do my nose contour with it as well. So I bring that down either side of the nose right to the tip of the nose and sort of into the brow as well. So that's right down from brow to tip on either side. And underneath the tip as well. And then I just use my finger just to blend out the harsh, harsh edges Right, and then a little bit of blush. I'm going to use the Barry M Blusher Palette. You can tell which shade I like the most. This uh, sort of peachy shade that's got a tiny little bit of shimmer in. Take that brush that I was using for contour, dip it in. Don't want too much, just a little bit. Tap it off on the side of the palette. And you want to find the apples of your cheeks. So easiest way to do that is by smiling and sort of at the front there. It's like the fullest part of your cheek. The chubby part. And we'll apply it lightly either side. And once you're happy with the colour intensity, you can then sort of blend it out. I like to blend it all out across the cheek into the contour. Uh, and once you're happy with that, I'm going to go in with my highlighter again. Um, I'm going to take this on a small pencil brush like this one. Mine's a little bit blue stained from eyeshadow. Even though I've cleaned it a million times, it's still on there. This is the MAC 219 pencil brush. And I'm going to take that on my Cupid's bow, which are those two little lines there, in case you didn't know. on the tip of the nose and down the centre of the nose. And I just like to blend it out gently with my finger as well. And I'm going to take my big fluffy MAC brush. This is the MAC 224, nice big fluffy blending brush. The reason I like to use an eyeshadow brush like this is because you can concentrate it more in one area rather than using a bigger brush like, say, um, the Peaches Makeup PC17, which is an actual highlight brush. See that one's slightly bigger, but it's also a lot less controllable because of how fluffy it is, whereas this one is. And I'm going to take that on my cheekbones, just the highest point, which for me is sort of here. do that on both sides and then if you like me and you like a strong glow and you can intensify it a little bit by adding a little bit more and when I put the um, the second helping of highlighter on there I like to blend it out a little bit so I sort of do it in more circular motions and I'll take it up into the C shape as well which goes over the brow and sort of, I like to concentrate a little bit at the front of the brow there as well. And then blend it into that brow bone highlight as well. And I love this kind of little glowy part on the front of the cheek there. 
and especially if you've got quite full cheeks like me the uh, when the light hits it it really picks it up oh and a little bit on my chin as well and then i like to go back in with my contour brush the brush that i used for contour and i just like to blend out the highlight just a little bit just so there's no sort of like harsh edges and you can see like a visible line of of highlight i like it all to sort of blend together seamlessly okay uh lips next I'm just going to start off by priming them with some of the W7 Power Perfecting Potion. It's got hyaluronic acid in it, so that's great for pumping your lips up. And it's also got a super fine, micro fine, um, exfoliating sugar crystals in it. So it gets rid of that kind of like crusty, chapped look, which we all have in the winter. and kind of just massage it in. So once that's all massaged in, we can go ahead and do the lips and I'm gonna just do sort of like a nude glossy look today. Um, so I'm gonna line them first and this is the uh, MUA Intense Colour Lip Liner. I think it's MUA. Uh, yeah, this is the MUA Intense Colour Lip Liner in the shade Sincere, so it's kind of like a nudie brown. I'm just gonna start by lining my lips. Now, a little trick with the lips. I never underline my lower lip because my lower lip I always feel is quite full. It's my top lip that I feel is lacking slightly in the plump department. So a lot of people tell you to start at the outer edge and work your way in, but I don't. What I like to do first is get my cupid's bow straight and even and where I want it to be. Now, I do slightly overline my top lip only by a fraction. So I don't really overline it. I just kind of go right at the very edge um, because you can always tell an overlined lip and it doesn't always look very nice. So I just start by accentuating the Cupid's bow, the little, the little V. Just like so. And once you've got that, you can then work from the outer edge and bring it in. because you've then kind of got something to match up to. And then on the bottom lip, I just kind of go from one of the outer corners to the other. Just by following the natural line. So once my lips are fully lined, I then go in with a lipstick and I'm going to use the um, Freedom. I don't even know if you can get these anymore. These are a range that I bought a set of. They were all nude lipsticks and it's by Freedom. They did use to sell it in Superdrug, uh, but they do do loads of different nude lipsticks. This is just a matte one. It's a matte nude lipstick in the shade Naked Truth. And it's sort of like a, a peachy toned nude, slightly lighter than the lip liner. So I'm going to take that on a lip brush. Um, this is just a cheaper lip brush that I actually picked up from Lidl of all places. They had, um, you know, like the middle, the middle aisle of Lidl and Aldi is fantastic. <laughs> they have so much junk stored in there. You could have a field day. And um, yeah, so I was in Lidl um, and they'd got these makeup brushes in the middle aisle. There was literally one... It was in a, it was in a clearance basket as well, like those metal baskets. It was in a clearance one, so there was literally one set left, and it had a couple of different brushes in it, including this lip brush and some big fluffy brushes, and then one oh this one actually that's like a concealer brush. And I thought, oh, that looks really good. And they've kind of got like a wooden um, wooden brush, whatever you call it, stick. The stick bit is wooden, and I thought, oh, they look quite nice. And then I think they were like two quid so I shall have them and I did and they're actually not bad brushes so I've just taken that lipstick on this lip brush there that I've just dropped all over myself and I'm just going to fill in the rest of my lips I 
kind of blend it in with the lip liner as opposed to taking the lipstick right to the edge. And then top it with a little bit of gloss. And if you know me, you know that I love the Peaches Makeup Lip Glosses. Um, my husband bought me a set for Christmas, not last Christmas, the Christmas before. And I think there was like five or six lip glosses in there for about 20 quid. So it was a proper bargain. And they're all nude, same as I say, but they've all got a slight different variation of colour. Uh, this one that I'm going to use today is called Bambi. And it's kind of got a peachy tint to it. Um... There's one that's got a pink tint to it, tint to it. There's a couple of darker ones, and then a neutral tone one called Honey, which is quite popular with my clients. So I'm just taking a bit on the back of my hand there, and take it all over the lip. What I like so much about these glosses is that they are proper pigmented like you can barely see through the lip gloss because the colour's so pigmented um, but the best thing is that they are the most long-lasting lip glosses I've ever come across because you know how you're used to it aren't you when you buy a lip gloss it lasts for two seconds you have a drink and it's gone or you go outside the wind chucks your hair in your face you get stuck to your lips and then it's gone um or you eat seven packets of crisps and it's gone <laughs> Not everybody does that, that's just me. Um, but this one doesn't, this one sticks on quite well. So you can have a drink, you can have something to eat and it'll still be there. Uh, even after, um, you know, full day of wearing it, well, sort of like halfway through the day, you can still see the pigment on the skin. It's not glossy, you've got rid of that, most of that's gone, but you can still see the pigment there. Um, and I like that the most about these glosses. And I think for 20 quid for five or six, uh, slightly different shades, isn't bad really. Um, so that's every step done. I'm just going to give it a quick spritz with the um, glow spray, as I've decided to call it. And there we have it. There's the finished look. Um, if you're wondering how I did my hair, by the way, I haven't straightened it, haven't curled it, haven't done anything to it apart from wash it the other day. And uh, my new favourite thing is this. It is a blow dry brush from Amazon and it was about 30 quid. I cannot for the life of me pronounce the name of it, which is this. It looks like it could possibly be Russian <laughs> or something. Um, but it is absolutely amazing. It's got um, low, media, uh, middle and high settings on it. So you don't have to singe the heck out of your hair. You can just have it on the middle. But I can't, my mouth cannot decide whether I'm trying to say medium or middle. The middle setting... Um, it's a lot nicer to your hair than say having it on the high, uh, but it still does the job. And it puts a lot of volume into your roots and it straightens out and gets rid of all the frizz and kinks out of the length. And because it does that, I find that I don't need to um, straighten it or curl it or anything that I would sort of normally do, especially straighten it. So yeah, 30 quid off Amazon, I absolutely love it. I just section my hair when it's, I, I say wet, I let it air dry for a bit after I've come out of the shower or the bath or whatnot, um, air dry it for a little bit. And then once it's, you know, still damp, but not soaking wet, I'll section it and just work my way from bottom to top. Um, and I always kind of like take these front pieces, put them together and blow dry it back that way so that I get the volume in my roots. Uh, but yes, handy little tool to have. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video, this uh, get ready with me video, as much as I've enjoyed making it. I hope you enjoyed the raffle as well the other night. Congratulations to Penny and Lucy that won. If you want to be that person that wins and gets a free appointment or a voucher towards half the price of an appointment, then play next time. Uh, within the next couple of months, I'll probably run another one. Um, I know that many of you did read my post the other night about Facebook and this ridiculous algorithm that it's got. And I've been reaching, like I say, 36 people out of 500, nearly 600 people that like my page, it was shown to just 36. And that can be hugely damaging to my business. 
because believe it or not, I do rely on you all, everybody that comes to me that pays to have the makeup done. Um, it's you guys that pay for things for my family. You know, it goes towards the food shop or towards the bills or towards petrol. It's you guys that pay for that. And I couldn't do this without you. And the fact that Facebook was not showing you guys, the ones that pay my bills, um, my posts, I, it, it's upsetting. Even if it's just a like or just a comment, just an emoji, anything, anything that will then open the door to your friends and friends of friends and so on and so forth. That all helps. That all makes a massive difference um, to how many people actually get to see my stuff and decide whether or not they want to come and see me personally to have the face done. So, um, yeah, you could make a huge impact on me and my family if you just help share it. Just a little bit. Just a like. Just a small like, a small comment, anything like that. Anyway, enough waffling on. Um, I told you the other day as well that I have something in the pipeline. Um, I don't know if you guys have guessed what it is yet. I am not going to tell you. It is not quite ready, but it will be soon. And I think I'll probably do a live video when everything is um, up and running so that I can introduce my new little sideline to you um, and see what you guys think. Um, the vote that we did to get this Get Ready With Me video was a vote between a Get Ready With Me video and a skincare chit chat. Um, the Get Ready won, so that's what we've done today. I do want to do the skincare chit chat and I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to do that as a live yet because I'm not actually going to be putting any makeup on. I thought I'd probably do it a little bit differently. And you can join me to take my makeup off um, and I can show you what I use to de-stress and relax my skin once I've had a full face on for the day. Um, probably going to do it in an evening time, like you say, possibly live. Um, so if that's something that you think you'll enjoy, then let me know. As before, as always, let me know what you think of this video in the comments down below. If you've not already liked and subscribed to my channel on YouTube, then please do so because again, every little helps. And that's it. That's all from me. So I'll see you guys shortly. Bye.